So it's not been a few months since the Rabbit R1 was announced and the hype has kind of settled a little bit and even I almost forgot that I ordered this thing until I received an update email from Rabbit. So unfortunately for me, my order won't be shipped until May or June. I was part of like the third batch or something. And I tried to get that shipped earlier using my popular points oh, on YouTube, but I ain't got it like that. So if you want to help me get to that point, please like the video. Now we have an update on ship dates and what features will be available at launch. And there's even an event that they're hosting in April, which is my last hope at getting my device early. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But it's not all good. Some of the features that I and I'm sure others were expecting and were excited won't be available at launch. So for starters, we got a list of features that are gonna be available at launch. So day one, they categorize these into two groups, a basic feature list and a land powered list. So. If I'm being real though, the list is a little disappointing, at least to me, because, and I'll explain that in a sec, but first, the list of basic features are conversation with LLM or large language model, up-to-date search with perplexity, AI vision, and I'm not exactly sure what this means, but that's what they have listed, bi-directional translation and note-taking with AI summary. And as for the land-powered features, those are music, generative AI, rideshare, and food. But we're not gonna see the travel feature and the teach mode they demonstrated at the keynote, unfortunately. And you know what's funny? I didn't really think about it. I expected this to just be available whenever the device launched, but then putting some thought into it, I'm like, it almost sounds too good to be true. Like, I don't know. It just feels like that now that I put some thought into it. But if you don't know, teach mode is what allows the lamb to be trained and carry out the task on apps and, you know, workflows. They're referring to this as training your rabbits. This to me was one of the biggest things that led to me pre-ordering the device, but unfortunately it won't be available at launch, as I mentioned. So you can essentially train it to handle any task and personalize it to your liking without having any program or coding experience, which I don't have. So I'm really hoping this comes in like soon after launch, but if I'm being honest, it seemed too good to be true after putting some thought into it. Like that just sounds very complicated and you know, AI has been buzzing for a while now, but it's still kind of like in the early stages, even though it's like ramping up really fast. But yeah, we're not getting it on launch day. So I thought about how there are so many factors that go into what seems like simple tasks that we don't consider. For example, when I'm jotting down notes or like I have a specific way of doing so where I use bullet points and formatting options like headings, you know, subheadings and something as simple as like listing. I structure it in a way that whenever I take a glance at it, you know, at the document, I can kind of immediately just scope out different topics. Um, and it sounds like simple stuff, right? Like, yes to us and definitely to me because it's my workflow, but I can't imagine how it can be difficult for like for Rabbit to program something to carry out a task like that. So I understand I didn't even expect it to be perfect at launch, but we're not getting it at all. And forget about planning an entire vacation, kind of like they showed in the keynote. It just seems too good to be true now. But I, I think that they'll get it eventually. So I think at one point, hopefully in the near future after launch, you know, they'll they'll release it. There's so many little details that I'm curious about, like selecting cheapest available flights, booking hotels, activities and transportation methods that are convenient and cheap. You know, not everyone has a bunch of money to spend on vacation, but something, for example, something like accommodating for accessible train station if you're disabled or traveling with someone that's disabled. These things are all things that Rabbit R1 would have to consider. Um, and I guess if you were able to train it or just tell it, then it would be simple, but, or not simple, but maybe it would be able to carry it out, but we're not getting that day one. I just wonder how long it's gonna take now after launch for this to come out. By the way, it's not that I think these features are bad, these are the ones that will be available at launch, but like having a conversation with a large language model and up-to-date search with perplexity, that's all very useful, but, and even the bi-directional translating um, and note-taking with AI, or um, note-taking with AI summary, um, it just feels like it isn't enough because some phones already have these built into them or you can just do it through third-party apps. And yes, the R1 is a device that's marketed as a companion to your phone. And the idea is to streamline those apps and services. But I guess I was just excited to try out these features that are unique to the R1 and we'll have to wait a little bit longer. There's still some benefits of having a streamlined way to interact with apps without constantly switching between them like we do on our phones. If this works as they presented, I think this will still be very nice. Hopefully though, more features like the travel feature will come to the R1 quickly after launch. 
in updates, which by the way, these updates will be headless, which means the computing is offloaded to data centers. And Rabbit says that they intentionally designed it this way so that the software updates will happen on the cloud and you'll never have to actually wait and see them happen. So the, the way they described it is one day you'll wake up and your device will be up to date. Pretty nice. So lastly, they're having an event on April 23rd and it's in New York City. And on April 2nd, they allowed people to register for this event and they'll select 300 people who will be able to attend and pick up their devices at the event. Um, there's also supposed to be, you know, food and drinks and, and a surprise for those who are interested. It's more, it seems like it's mostly a community thing, but I signed up for this and I got a confirmation saying they'll reach out to me. Um, once they've confirmed my order number and other details. So I don't know if that means that I've been selected, but I'll know in 72 hours. By the time this video comes out, I should probably know. So if I'm one of the winners, um, stay tuned because I'll be covering whatever I can from the event and then I'll be sharing it with y'all, of course. And actually there's one more thing I wanna to touch on and that's the rabbit hole. It's essentially their portal to manage all of the connected services. So you can log into any apps and services that are available with R1 through the rabbit hole. Rabbit says that the platform can see the process of you logging into a vendor's apps, but they say that the passwords and the usernames are encrypted and protected and can be removed whenever you'd like. So as far as privacy, if that holds up, that's a good thing. But yeah, that's all for this video. I'm excited for the rabbit R1 and really don't know if I'll like the product when I get it in my hands, but stay tuned, catch y'all on the next one. And thank you so much for 500 subs. Um, I'm going to try to get a thousand this year. So, you know, if you haven't, please subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.